I've decided the best part about Easter is the discounted Easter candy you get the day after. These are itty bitty bunnies. They're these tiny, tiny chocolate bunnies. And they're delicious. At 50 cents to get a whole bag of bunnies. Okay, so bunnies consumed, except for this one. Let us, let us continue. Whereupon uh, Dave and Rose were having a conversation. And thipping was occurring. Oh yeah, I remember that now. Then I guess that's what happened. What? Oh, wait. I went back several pages to show somebody something. And I didn't remember I did it! Sob! <laughs> yeah, I was copying and pasting bits of log. I just ate and there's meat grizzle in my teeth. Arg. Okay, I think that was all of them. Because I'm pretty sure I did that one already. Yeah. Okay. Oh, wonderful. Another interruption. More panels! More! Okay. Let's see what's going on on Battleship World. Did I click on the right thing? No, I didn't. Whoosh! Mission accomplished. Ugh. What the fuck is this? So dumb. But friendly enemies are here. It's still missing though? Wait, this thing is gone too. Oh shit. You're supposed to kill the girl! Ugh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Angry barking. Meep. Where's my wallet? I still have the ring, though. Much better. Wait a minute. It's 12.30. It's Jack Noir! But he's Beck Noir! But no, he's Jackun, because that's what I call him. Because I can. Kaboom. The end. And the mayor died. Someone's banging on the door. Nana. <sighs> Eureka. Stand by for clarification. Re-enthusiastic outburst. Yes. It is as hoped for beyond hope. Unusual devices may be used to duplicate fresh, perfectly pressed garments. Inexhaustibly, as far as I know. A reconstructing complete professional ensemble now. Hold. Ah, pleased to report restoration of dapper visage and overwhelming success. Alas, devices appear to hold no such promise for departed family members. Misplaced handheld stem press. Steam press. Update on device utility. A combination of apparel synthesis presents intriguing possibilities. Now combining expensive leather pipe tobacco sleeve with handsome gray fedora. To document results shortly. Resulted in hat without landish and frivolous appearance. Uh, do not care for. Till discard immediately. A combination of pant, fine cotton shirt, even more disappointing, yielded useless, excessively tall pant, relieving of... Oh, you spelled relieving wrong. For wardrobe at once. Made unwelcome determination. Production requires an expense of glittering abstractions called grist. Such jewels remain in cash, libation reserve at premium. Consumed final swallow of carefully rationed urine. Soon to drink water elsewhere in exotic new surroundings. Is this Bear Grist playing Esper? More importantly, to seek Grist facilitating continued accessorizing. Note yourself, you spoils to make more hats. Preparing for expedition to reap gems from mischievous local fauna. Crafted sturdy bludgeoning instrument out of upper mailbox. Tall pant, perhaps adaptable as defensive garment. Uh, pardon while donning tall pant. Don tall pant. Uh, confidence in martial prowess perplexingly swells. Venturing out. Powering down gray, serviceable handheld computing device to preserve battery. Additional updates to be submitted in a frank and forthright manner for judicious appraisal within a reasonable time frame. T. 
TIA affirmations. That's funny. I could have sworn... I've seen people on um, the PARP play John's dad, but they use Pipefan413. So his actual username is Fedora Freak? Hmm. If I had known that whilst I was reading, I would have given a better voice for John's black dad. He sounds like a really badass Samuel L. Jackson in my head, okay? But he's all doting and loving. Oh, John's black dad, you are my favorite. Okay, the following matters have been submitted to Frank Forth for Pipe and Four Things. Judicious appraisal. Let's see. There's more going on there. Oh, okay. Th then who else would be playing? Wow, I feel kind of stupid for what I just said. They were talking about Esperb, so his, he is PipeFan413. Which is really cute, because that means that his username uses John's birthday. Alright, so I have no idea who Fedora Freak is, but apparently they are in the medium. Do we ever find out who they are? Maybe it's, like, other dad. Uh, turning on handheld device for brief report. A severe injury sustained in skirmish with undersized sportive rascal. A tall pant unremarkable in protective utility. Damaged, badly bloodied. No indication of laundering facilities throughout enchanted land whatsoever. Uh, losing fluid rapidly. Maintaining adequate hydration levels more important than ever. Uh, libations, unfortunately, not forthcoming. Arrest needed. Seeking surface suitable for assuming reclined posture. Strength depleting. Tie loosened. Removed. Rolled up neatly and tucked beneath hat. A minimal stamina left for disrobing sodden tall pant. Leaving on. Encountered rest surface. Horizontal stone slab exhibiting unidentified iconography. A tall post at each corner. Mysteriously inviting. Mounting slab exhaustion taking hold. Excuse me, sir. <laughs> Pipe fan 413, friend. Pipe fan 413, sound of voice nearly refreshing enough to distract from perpetual taste of warm, poorly filtered urine. Oh my no. I'm not actually your friend, dear. I am his mother. <laughs> Another of Pipe Fan's legendary pranks? Uh, please clarify. If yes, prepared to regard as hilarious. Were that, he Were that it was, I'm sorry to say there is no chicanery in play today at all. Though yes, that would be quite the doozy. I believe the late great colonel would surely say we were cooking with petrol upon hearing such a whopper. No, I am just an old woman looking for her son. Understood, madam. You remind me of him, so would you mind terribly if I talked to you for a little while? I am fearing the worst for my son, while my grandson has gone off to do great things. I've caught myself feeling a bit lonely, who? can imagine no greater pleasure. Though eyelids heavy, getting dark, feeling in extremities, fading. Oh, but you must be exhausted from your travels, you poor thing. Why don't you just lie there and rest? I will tell you a story. By fans 413's kindly mother, thank you. It is a fairy tale about a young sister and brother who were raised by a wicked witch. The witch, in truth, was a world-famous baking baroness. Her cruelty made life miserable for the two children, who did not have their father any more to protect them. He was the greatest prankster who ever lived, and a true southern gentleman. He was killed by a comet on the day the boy was born, and the wicked baroness raised them alone, with a hand as firm as that which she ran her brutal baking empire. The children pledged to each other that one day they would run away together. They followed in the footsteps of the dear colonel, in defiance of the old bad witch. They studied his every jape and practiced them in secret. But as they grew older, their interests drifted apart. The boy developed a passion for adventure and put aside his study of practical jokes. He dreamed of wealth and fame and discovery and swore he would wander the world. One day, he decided to run away with the loyal dog he inherited from their father. He asked the girl if she would come along, but she was too scared of the retribution that might follow. The boy scoffed at the danger and assured his sister there was nothing to worry about. But he had not seen firsthand what the Baroness was capable of. He told his sister that he believed in her, and that she could handle whatever the witch could throw at her. And with that, he was off, and she would never see him again. The Baroness would raise her quite strictly, monitoring, monitoring her in the art of baking. The girl took to the lessons with fierce determination. Her only act of defiance left was to one day surpass the Baroness in skill and beat her at her own game. It was all she could do, for the Baroness made sure she knew there could be no escape. 
The girl surely missed her brother, and soon he achieved fame for his exploits. She followed him in the newspapers, the tales of his remarkable discoveries, inventions, and riches. How she wished she could rejoin him and be free from toiling for the pastry hag. One day the girl was able to gather enough bravery to mention her brother to the baroness and her desire to see him again. With contempt, she guaranteed that this could never happen. When the girl asked why, that is when the baroness began to reveal to her more than just her baking secrets. She mentioned that, like in many fairy tales, there was more to the children's past than they knew. The colonel was not their father, nor was the baroness their mother. They, in fact, had no mother or father at all, nor were they ever actually born. They had both fallen from the sky. They were not actually brother and sister, as they had been told either. Again, like in many fairy tales, the truth is that they were always destined to become married one day. They were to have two children, a son and a daughter, and these children were meant to save the world. But the batter witch was determined to make sure this destiny would never be realized. In her limitless cruelty, she would do all in her power to keep them apart for the rest of their lives. The girl that day swore she would bring down the Baroness and her evil empire. She would use the many secrets she'd learned over the years against her, and began carefully plotting her downfall. Years went by. The girl was nearly ready to put her plan into action. But then, just like that, the Baroness disappeared. She was never seen or heard from again. The girl was finally free by a strange turn of events, but not without a final jab from the witch. It turned out that in her will she had left the entire company to the boy. The boy, now a grown man, was already very wealthy in his own right. He had no particular need for the baking empire, but assumed control nonetheless, and integrated the company into his extensive collection of enterprises. The girl, instead of seeing this as more misfortune, took the news as a relief. She'd just as soon have nothing to do with the witch's empire, and far preferred to pursue her original passion for practical japery. <laughs> she considered a reunion with her estranged brother, and once husband, destined to be. But the days of longing for a future with him seemed to be from another lifetime. The chance had come and gone. She was content to let him live increasingly, his increasingly elaborate life, or she sought a simpler one. Besides, now was not the time to revisit a destiny with an old star-crossed lover. She had recently become betrothed to a fine, upstanding gentleman. Soon, she would start a family. No, not one meant for heroism as foretold, but one that would make her happy nonetheless. In following years, she was left to ponder all that might have been. What might have been if there had been no baroness to keep the girl and boy apart? What might have been if the baroness had not disappeared, and she had the opportunity to use her secrets against her? For, you see, the girl had uncovered so many dirty secrets about the terrible batter witch, including the most troubling one of all. Of course no one would believe her, but she knew. She knew the Baroness was not human. Fedora Freak's grey serviceable handheld computing device battery has died. So this kind of, sort of, I mean, it, it answers a question and opens more doors to questions, uh, answers something I was wondering. Um, I'm going to be discussing spoilers here, so until I turn the page, um, spoilers, here they be. I've been trying to figure out how much that Bro in particular and Nana here know about their post-scratch lives. Because it seems to me that they seem to know. I mean, how did Bro know that Dave was coming there? And Nana implies that she had, like, a vague feeling about stuff that I know kind of happens in the post-scratch verse. So, something about this is confusing to me but not in the same sense that it's like, oh, I don't understand. It's more like, well, how much do they know? Because they obviously know something. And why do they know it? All right, back to business. Let's see what these guys are up to. Busted into his palace to finish the quest. I was expecting him to be asleep and was going to figure out some way to wake him up. But like last time I saw him, he was already awake to greet me. But I thought the denizens were supposed to be asleep. At least until you do the right things in your quest. They are. The sprites were programmed to know things like that about the game. But I guess not everything. It seems like if you try to go fight them too soon, you find them awake and they're like, what the fuck are you doing here already? Which is what happened last time I saw him, before I became a sprite. And I stupidly tried to fight him, which was a bad idea because he was hella strong. And the whole time he was raving about shit, about a stolen sword and a missing forge, but I wasn't really listening. If I had, I might have understood. He wasn't actually trying to kill me, he was giving me the choice. What choice? Wait, I mean, the choice. I always forget I can talk underlined for important shit. What did you choose? 
I guess I made an unwitting choice by deciding to flee. I figured he was unbeatable, so I decided to get the fuck out of there. So I snapped a quick capture of his huge hammer's code and then got the fuck out. What happened when you saw him this time? Like I said, he was awake again. But this time, I wasn't in any condition to fight. So I didn't. And that's what I didn't get. He's this terrible angry monstrous guy, but there's no need to fight him. So he looked me up and down all hard, saw the broken sword, and like before, gave me the choice. You mean choice? <laughs> Oops. Yeah. So, it was the same choice? No. It was different. I think it must always be different, depending on the circumstances. I don't know what the choice is when you face him the way you're supposed to, but I'm showing up as this bleeding bird sprite holding his broken sword, so that's a pretty odd situation. Then, what did he make you decide? He sees I got his sword and it's busted and you can tell he's pissed. But like before, it's just like restrained anger. Like, he's always about to just fucking flip, but he still keeps it together. So he can tell me he can repair it and make the daringer with the forge lit. He says he can repair anything, but only one thing. And I had to choose. So I said, okay, fix the sword. As opposed to what? Meh, doesn't matter really. I just thought making this sword felt like the right thing to do. Oh. So I gave him the sword, but it still wasn't all that simple. He needed lava from the forge to make it, which means Echidna had to be awake. Our denizens had to have some kind of truce to make it happen. You see what I mean about it being complicated? Yeah. So Jade must have done something right to wake her up and get the forge going. I don't know what she did, though. Probably something amazing. She's still working so hard to help everyone. I guess it used to be that way. But I've completely forgotten how. Are you sure? What's happening? Reckoning. It's getting close to the end. More meteors are getting by the portals. The battlefield will probably be wiped out soon. Can we do something to stop it? Would there be a point? I don't know. I like it here, though. I felt like I was drawn to come here when I wasn't sure where to go. Yeah, me too. The meteors and all the fire. It reminds me of when I died. I was trying to wake John up. I was scared then too. But I didn't let the fear stop me from trying to save him. What would you want to do if you weren't scared? I have no idea. I guess try to help? What is there to do? Well, I was going to bring the sword to Dave. Oh no, does that mean you're going to leave? No, I was going to say, I'm not in any shape for more adventuring. I figure this is probably my last stop. Mm -hmm. But maybe this is a way you can help. You mean... Then I should give him the sword? If you want. But I don't want to leave you here either. Maybe you don't have to actually go anywhere. You gotta have a lot of special powers, remember? Because of ascending to doghood. Oh, yeah. Try doing your spacey thing. I mean, not to sound condescending or anything, but it's gotta be like borderline omnipotence, pretty much. Just push your mind to it. Alright, I will try. Yeah, she's pretty much got omnipotence now. <laughs> This is new. Carcinogeneticist CG began trolling Garden Gnostic GG. What the hell are you doing now? Password. Seriously, why did you go back to see her? You didn't mention this last time. Listen, fuck ass. I'm going to need a password before you continue, please. Right, okay. Let's see if I can remember. It was pretty elaborate, if I recall. Okay, here goes. I'm a disgusting, worthless bilge sack on the gargantuan teat of a laboring, leprous muscle beast. My self-esteem is so small, its existence is a matter of conjecture among theoretical physicists. I smell so bad, the stench cannot be expressed with even the most eloquent, florid language. The odor my body makes makes poets cry. I have won special awards for discovering new places to touch myself erotically while farting. I unfairly pulverized a competition in asshole pageants, and I have received a lifetime ban from ugly contests by President Shitface himself. My blood is not fit to flow through a sewer, and my sign is a pictographic symbol that loosely translates to please hike these pants up to this guy's armpits, chain him to a flogging jut, and make a fucking example out of this sorry sack of shit. When I look in a mirror, my reflection slowly shakes his head while I wet myself in shame. Mm. What? That was it, wasn't it? How is that not fucking it? Did I forget an apostrophe or something? No, Carcat. That was not quite the password. But you were on the right track. Can we just talk now? 
do you even remember the right password? Something along the lines of gratuitous self-deprecation forced into my mouth involving reference to some kind of weird human coupling ritual. Ritual? You're being deliberately dumb. It was, if I hate myself so much, then why don't I hate marry myself? Remember? I was just using the password system to poke a little fun at you and you turn it into this whole overdramatic thing. Jeez. Ha <laughs> ha, we can we get down to fucking business again. I'm sorry, but when he got to the line about touching himself erotically while he farts, I just kind of, like, couldn't anymore. Also, Jade and Karkat's voices attempted to mate in the middle of my trying to read this, and it was just awful, so I apologize for that. And the sudden squeakiness. Because Jade is squeaky, but she's not that squeaky. I wonder if we will ever be able to start a conversation without having a ridiculous argument about the password system? If you would drop the password system and let Future Me talk to you, he might be able to give you an answer. Spoiler, the answer would be no, because the passwords are retarded. Why would I want to do that? The only guy who's dumber than past Karkat is Future Karkat, and vice versa. I have this on good authority from both sources. I still think your use of the terms is kind of asinine. There really is no past or future Karkat from your view. There's Karkat who knows less stuff, and Karkat who knows more stuff. Why not just gather the facts from the one who's got the lowdown already? I mean, I'd do it myself, but I can't stand the guy. You see, that is your problem. Okay, one of your many, many problems. You have no patience to do things the right way. You're always just looking for the shortcut. Even if doing so has brought you nothing but trouble a hundred times before. It is sort of funny that the only thing standing in your way is one of your other problems. Your preposterous self-loathing. So you can't even trust your future self to help you cheat. It's like you have so many problems they cancel each other out. That's not the only thing standing in my way. Your stupid passwords are also standing in my way. If not for that, I could be fast-tracking this dissolution city for us both. Exactly. Okay, whatever. Let's just get on with this linear conversation, okay? Okay. So you gave me that silly password, and we ended our conversation a few minutes from ago from my end. And I scanned ahead looking for a good moment on your timeline to pick up again. And I noticed you went back to see her again for some reason. Yes. So I'm just wondering why. What happened to the frog breeding? I thought we were on a roll with that. Yes, we still are. This little detour was related to that task. We should nearly be done. What was she even saying to you? I can't understand a word of that horrifying gibberish. I can understand her just fine. I still don't really get it. Why my denizen was such a nightmare while well, yours apparently gives you guttural pep talks in some Byzantine monster language. How do you know the word Byzantine? There's more of that, like translation convention. <laughs> we already talked about this. Echidna and I have an understanding now. Oh, vague bullshit is exactly the fucking thing I can't get enough of. Well, maybe if you weren't in such a grumpy hurry all the time, you wouldn't have killed your denizen so quickly. You might have actually learned something. Huge ugly monsters are for killing. Period. Did you ever talk to Kanya about it? I don't remember. Maybe. I'm a busy guy, Jade. I talk to a lot of people about a lot of stuff, including myself. Her situation is very similar to mine. I thought she killed her denizen to light the forge or something. It doesn't sound like you got the whole story. Or maybe you just weren't listening to her. Well, I sure don't think it was whatever you did. In any case, I thought all that was over with. Why are you back? What does this have to do with frog breeding? This was Kanye's suggestion. Kanye's still helping you? Yes. I'm talking to her right now, actually. Oh. I see you're across the room. She's not talking to anyone on a computer now. Tur, of course not. She's from a different time than you, genius. Which time? A few hours in your future. Uh, I see how it is. You want to talk to future Karkat until I jump through your fucking password hoops and become him eventually. But you'll talk to future Kanye just like that? Double standard, anybody? Jade says, yes, please. You are so ridiculous. I have Kanye using the same password system as you. She's just a little further ahead of my timeline is all. It would be pretty hard to keep you both synced up. I thought you didn't want that shit spoiled from the future, though. Yeah, from my future. I don't want you guys telling me the things I do before I do them because you talk to future me. But knowing a few things about your future doesn't really matter. Not that I'm going to tell you any of it, so don't ask. I think I'm on the verge of becoming a religious person. I just don't know where else to turn to to remove the awesome suffering that Trillion's temporal chat bullshit miraculously continues to inflict on me. Maybe the merciful messiahs will come and take my pain away? Oh yes, that sounds heavenly. Jade, please excuse me while I go paint my face to outwardly reflect the beauty of my inner awakening and drub my think pan mercilessly to reduce my intelligence to the level necessary to sustain these beliefs. Sign. Liz, what are you even talking about? Are we almost done crafting this master plan? 
I have stuff to attend to here. My team is falling apart. And I can't find Gamzee anywhere. I'm worried he might have wandered off somewhere and got hurt. Aw. Well, you'll find him. I thought you weren't telling me about my future. I know, I made an exception. But only one. Let's move this along. Just update me on the frogs and give me a new password, okay? Kanye thinks we should all talk about this. She says you're important to consult on the matter, but the you from her time is too busy. Busy with what? Mm. She's opening a memo. Oh, boy. All right, I got five minutes, so... I'm not sure which one of these... Oh, I might as well just churn it out right now. I'll save the feels for later. I am piloting the moon through the furthest ring right now. At the moment, it's passing through a dream bubble. I am visiting your dream in person. Or you are the one visiting me as I travel in your sleep, if you'd rather look at it that way. Okay, so all these questions you just asked me, getting me to remember, you were just stalling me, weren't you? So I wouldn't wake up and try to stop you. Not entirely. And this sucks. Could you just please turn the thing around and come back? Why? I'm already out here. Might as well go through with it. We agreed I'd do it, though. Or at least you pretended to agree. Just before going into Major League Windup with your nap yarn. A Major League Windup? Sports. It's always been pretty sad that I seem to know more about sports than you, which is really saying something. All I'm saying is, no one likes a basketball hog. It's probably just a ball hog. I just think you should know. That any athletic arena a competitive achievement? It's a widely known fact that cherry-picking posers get showered in nothing but booze. You don't gank the rock and steal the big man's thunder on his raucous drive to the hole. Oh, Lord. Is that the sort of ignominy you want? See, you didn't consider sports. You just never considered the sports. The last thing I want to do is come between a big man's thunder and any particular hole he might prize. And yet, such has been what's happened. It's like the tight end was going long down the yard in sudden death. It's like me, I'm the tight end. And the quarterback sniped the field goal just before the NFL buzzer went off. The greedy quarterback is you. Tweet. And that's not even close to being a thing in football. But instead of winning the gold sports prize, you just fucking die and nobody cares and it didn't mean anything. Which prize is that? The football prize. You mean the most vaunted accolade associated with the gridiron, known as Stanley's Cup? No, come on. It's called the Bruce Bombardi Trophy or something. Or Best Pile Squad. I'll take your word for it. And even though you're dead, all these fat millionaires in helmets just leap on your corpse anyway and pile up, and I mean way up. How high do they even have to be? The sport pile doesn't stop from getting taller. Does the officiator have a means of measurement on him? I wouldn't want to be crushed by non-regulation sports pile. What do you care? You'll be dead in the mission, thieving poser you are. Poser? So not cool. Yes, poser. It should be my torso getting pulverized by that avalanche of overpaid beefcakes, and you know it. I forget what we were doing exactly. Were we pursuing the hackneyed debate over who has the best claim to self-sacrifice, or seeing who could have dumbass the other with obtuse sports lingo? There's obviously stopping a difference between those things, and the question is offensive. Almost as offensive as you stalling me when you peel out of here in your dumb moon. I'm the one stalling? The moon is probably just a speck in the sky now due to your strange beefcake harangue. Yeah, but I don't know what- how to wake back up is the thing. How do I wake back up? I guess I could wake you back up if you really want. Whoa, big-ass heads much? God, ugly art is ugly. <laughs> okay, then do it. But you have to promise to stay put. Don't try to stop me. Just let it go. But this was my mission. It really makes no sense for you to go. This was never your preoccupation. They selected me a long time ago. That doesn't make sense. Why would they drag me into it just to have me make a map and then let you ditch me? They've obviously been gunning for me, too. Yes, they helped you chart a path through the ring. And they will open the path for a pilot they have marked. I believe I fit the description. I'm not sure about you. Why do you think that? I'm a pilot. That's all there is to say on the matter. But I don't want you to die. Help John and Jade. This isn't right. Then I'm not going to help you wake up. I'll stall some more. So you admit you were stalling with all that bullshit? I said not entirely. What do you mean? It's going to be a long ride through all this nothingness. Maybe I just thought some company would be nice. Before it's all over. So what'll it be? What? I'll wake you, but only if you promise to rejoin the others. Could you give a message to John for me? Sure, but if I'm promising not to chase you down, then 
there's not really any hurry to wake up. Aw, are you sure? I was looking forward to bowling another wicked ghoulie with the arm. Sportsways. And no, I'll stay asleep a while. Okay. What did you want me to tell John? What was that? What? Did you hear something? No, what? I thought I heard something outside. Uh-oh. Are you next? Who's this douchebag? I mean, bag. Uh, uh, douchebag. I mean, bag. I I'm stuttering. This dude is making me nervous. You don't remember him? No. Then I guess this isn't a memory. So he's actually here with us on the moon? Not with us. Just me. You're still on Durst, remember? When you die in a dream, you die in real life! I can never tell if, like, the gist is supposed to be moving that slowly, or if it's just my stupid computer. But... Rose... Fly on up there! Attaboy. Okay, feels next time.